<clears throat> and good evening to everyone. I see that my YouTube is up and now the Facebook is coming up and we are live. It is good to be here and I hope that uh, what I have this evening will be a blessing for you. We will continue on the um, Genesis, the first two chapters, and keep looking at how that applies to the individual and how that Moses broke into a design of creation that is a design that holds true no matter what the creation is. So we see a secret of creation, uh, whether it is uh, animal life, human life, universe, elements, spiritual, whatever it might be, spiritual movement, it all starts in this very same manner. Now, before I get started, I want to hold this, uh, this book up for just a moment and let you know that I have, uh, I have a book that I have written and I haven't uh, said anything about it for a little while, but that is um, Close Encounters of the supernatural and many of you have bought the book and very soon now the they will have a website set up for me for me to continue to write books with them and they will uh, they will also have uh, the ebook out and if things go well and you buy it um, then we will move to an audiobook and I already have my second book written, just waiting, um, get a little bit of uh, funds and money to apply to starting on that book, having it edited and do the same thing. And it's a second edition of Close Encounters of the Supernatural. So thank you to those who have been buying the book. And I would ask that uh, if you could, um, please go on to Amazon where you bought the book from and leave a uh, leave a review for me, a good review. Right now there are some reviews on there and it is a five star. And when Amazon sees that, then they will start putting it into bookstores and, and uh, advertising it more and things like that. So I would appreciate it if you would do that. And you can find the book on Amazon, Close Encounters of the Supernatural, author Donald Parnell. Or you can, uh, you can go to um, Kindle and, and you can find the ebook on there also. And you can go to Barnes & Noble if you wanted to buy from Barnes & Noble. So there's several places you can get the book. And then uh, we do have a website which the link will be on very soon, as soon as uh, we get it uh, from them. It will be on there, and it is spiritualenergy.net. Spiritualenergy.net. So, appreciate everything, and we are going to take a good look here for just a few minutes at, um, at part five of... Um, of Genesis where that uh, we are talking about the first two chapters on creation, the pattern or the design of creation. So I hope it goes well for you and that you pick up some more information that will help you understand yourself. I'm, I'm not too worried about you understanding the Zodiac right now or understanding the universe or the planets or anything else. I'm taking this design of creation and showing how it is developing in you. So it is uh, 1124 of 2024, and I am Don Parnell, a Toriallo Yonsa. You can find me on, uh, on almost all the social webs and different places as Independent Thinker 1954. So... Please go out and, um, and enjoy those things. If you're not a YouTube subscriber, please hit that subscribe button. And um, 
it's it's free. Just hit the subscribe button. That's it's not members yet, but hit the subscribe button, and I would appreciate it as it builds my subscriptions and helps me to be able to do more on YouTube. So we're going to talk on uh, part five, and it is the Garden of Eden condition. Now, <clears throat> in part four, we opened um, the fact that the creation was finished, and it is good. And so everything is in you that needs to be in you. There's nothing else in you being created. You have been created, and the spirit looked at it and said, it is finished, and it is very good. And he rested in that and very pleasurable to the spirit. Now in the Garden of Eden condition, we will open up, this is number five, how the pillar of fire changed the elements to develop and materialize the family structure, the humanity, the children, the offspring, and how he brought it about in seventh, seven dimensions. So I'm gonna read just a little bit out of the King James. And um, it says, Genesis 2 and 8, And the Lord God planted a garden eastward in Eden. And there he put the man whom he had formed. And out of the garden, I'm sorry, and out of the ground made the Lord God to grow every tree that is pleasant to the sight and good for food. The tree of life also in the midst of the garden and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. So notice that the tree of life and the tree of knowledge of good and evil were in the midst of the garden. And the river went out of Eden to water the garden, and from thence it was parted and became into four heads. So I'm going to read to you the, uh, after looking through the Hebrew, Aramaic, Greek, and Arabic, um, this is not precise wording. This is what I picked up from reading all these things. And it says in Genesis 2, 8 through 10, I'm going to read that. After developing a child, which is what he did. He made a man out of the ground. After developing a child, the spirit moved to multiply the family in its innocent stage at its beginning just like anything. The spirit gave his child the qualities and the attributes, potentially, giving his child the capability and intelligence to grow and develop in its own character. I'm reading to you Hebrew, Aramaic, Greek, Arabic mixed together with the very best understanding of what it says. There were numerous qualities within the garden, including life and the knowledge of life's good and evil. Out of man, the river of life began to flow into the earth and pushed to the four corners, rushing and bursting forth as one from the womb. Now, if you read those, um, I'm not going to read it all, but those the, that uh, it started out as the, the head of it, of the river, was one. It was Pison, Gion, Hedekal, and Euphrates, Hedekal being the Tigris. So there were four rivers, and there was the head of it. So you actually, it's like five, and it was it, four were flowing out of the one. So the one head and the four rivers that flowed out of Eden are the fivefold ministry. That's the way I look at it. And you say, well, yeah, you know, all these great men and all this and, and uh, the church and no, not even, I'm not even going there. We're talking about the individual. And so the one head and four rivers that flowed out of Eden, and we'll talk about Eden in just a minute. It's a condition in the garden flowed out of Eden are the fivefold ministry, not some special men who are beyond everyone else in life. That's not what this is about. Apostle, prophet, evangelist, 
pastor, and teacher were a gift given to humanity to understand itself. It's not like this man is an apostle and this man is a prophet and this guy back here is a teacher and there only certain ones have this one of these gifts. No, this fivefold ministry was given to humanity, this flowing of river coming out of the garden, coming out of Adam, coming out of the family structure, was apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, and teacher. And it was a gift given to humanity to help it understand itself. They work in you every single moment of your life. Those five things work in you. It is a quality of you, every one of you. I don't care who you are. This is the true relationship between the spirit and humanity. These rivers coming out of the garden, coming out of humanity. These gifts were, dis, dis, uh, were bestowed upon us. Now, if you want to read it, Ephesians 4, Paul talks about it. I know where he's getting from, where he's going back to. The Garden of Eden, chapter 2. And he says, this, uh, this is what I have to say about it. This gift of Christ to humanity is in each of you. It's for the perfecting of the saints. Now, it's not like I'm going to perfect Alan Stuckless. Uh, Joe Gomez is not going to perfect me. These ministry, this ministry, five gifts lay within me to help me learn and understand and comprehend so that it is the perfecting of me, the saints. You all have the same thing in you. It's the work of the ministry within you. So we see this now. It And it is for the edifying of the body of Christ. Your body is Christ. Now you can take a collective look at it too, sure but we're talking about a design of creation. And in this design, this ministry is put in the heart of every person. And this ministry brings you to your perfection. It's a work and it's for the edifying or the building up of the body within you. Eat and make your body. That's a spiritual thing. It will bring us to the unity of the faith. Now, <laughs> I don't mean to, <laughs> excuse me, I'm not trying to make fun, but I have never seen these preachers out here. You can go back thousands of years and I've never seen them ever bring unity to the body of Christ. But this says it's for the edifying of the body and to bring us to the unity of the faith. Now, if that spirit of Christ is in here, and those five ministries, that gift is working in me, it will search, it will, it will find, it will seek, it will open, it will do everything for me, <clears throat> and it will do the same thing for Brother Allen or Brother... Uh, Joe Gomez or Mitta Edwardson, and you can be all the way around the world. I can sit here in Ohio, and you can sit up there in Canada, and you know what? When we come together, that ministry laying in you will have brought you to the unity of the faith, not some preacher. You ain't never going to find that. Some preacher out here thinking he's uh, one of the one of the gifts and and they get in arguments and ups and downs and they start denominations and they start their own church and then they they split that church four or five times and everything else it has nothing to do with a man the ministry is the edification of the work in you and it will bring you to the unity of the faith so that when i'm talking with kit or with Brother Antonio, or whoever it might be, Brother Felix Longahoe, 
or Uli Marion, you know what we find out? This thing in us has brought us all to the same understanding. That's what these four rivers and the head of it all, the fifth, those five are flowing out of the garden. Now, let's go on here just a little bit. And it brings you to the knowledge of the Son of God. Brings you to the knowledge that you are a son of God. Okay, nobody bring me to that. Nobody can tell me I'm a son of God. And I say, oh, gee, thanks, I'm a son of God. Something in here, that ministry in here, will bring you to the knowledge that you are a son of God and you are a perfect man and it will lead and guide you into all truth and bring you the comfort you need and it will bring you to the full stature of Christ in his fullness. We will move from being children, letting doctrines and uh, carry us about and everything else and we will move past the slate of men, all these out here claiming they're this big gift, we'll move past the slate of men and grow up in truth and love. And Paul says, we will grow up into him. He didn't say we'll grow up to him or be with him. He said, we will grow up into him. That's what, we, that's what we've done. She is him. Now, for these scriptures, my observation, <clears throat> the pillar of fire opened up an exploration of itself. That's what it was doing. We went through the study. Go back and start at one and come through to the fifth. If you haven't been listening, you'll find where I'm at and you'll understand it better. The pillar of fire opened up an exploration of itself, becoming the object of human and the observer as the pillar of fire. So he is the observer and the object. He is the creator and the creation. And the pillar of fire did this. Now, the intelligence of Christ, the anointing gave humans that intelligence, that move of Christ into materialistic things, that move of Christ into the elements. He gave humans the highest form of cognitive skills in ability and thinking, so much so that Paul said, we have the mind of Christ. That's, that's, that's amazing that he could carry us to the point that we have the very mind of Christ. Now, the pillar of fire has moved into sonship. That's what it's doing. It's creating a, a, uh, a base of sonship to be able to bring out of itself sonship and understanding. Now, the, the pillar of fire moved into sonship, and it wanted to explore every quality of itself, an attribute of itself. It wanted to learn how to change. Yes, the pillar of fire can change. It wanted to learn how to change. It wanted to learn how to color outside the boundaries, not stay within the boundaries, the limits. It wanted to learn how to color outside the boundaries and how to learn what consisted of life, both good and evil. That's why it did what it did. The life of humanity, Christ was dwelling in the elements of humankind. The pillar of fire released the band. You remember in Daniel 4, it put a band around the tree so it couldn't grow. Well, the pillar of fire released the band on the concepts of good and evil. It opened up the womb. It birthed the concept out and it was what was in man, and it brought out the desires and the concepts of good and evil. Someone said <clears throat> Adam couldn't observe anything outside the word as long as they were in the garden. Well, I don't know about that because they did things in the garden 
that was outside the present word that was given to them. Now today, we understand it better. But at that time, it was outside the present word that was given to them. And Adam moved on it. Now, the garden. A lot of us, we think of a garden, and, or we think somewhere over in the Middle East, in the far east as you can get, there's a garden. And, uh, and that's where they were at, and they got put out of that garden. Well, let me go back into the Hebrew, the Aramaic, so forth. Garden. What garden means is family structure and relationship, principles and convictions. Just go back and hunt it up yourself if you can't believe what I'm telling you. It's there. These are the things that Adam moved into. The pillar of fire began to build a human race, began to open children into the process and bring out sonship. So it planted him in a garden, or in other words, it put the desire of family structure, relationship, principle, and convictions inside humanity. And when it done that, Adam, these qualities were to be nurtured and taken care of in his earth, his family. The two qualities within Adam were clear. Begin to understand, these are the two qualities in Adam. Adam began to understand good and evil and how to deal with it. That was the qualities Adam, the Lord, opened. He first finished his creation, then he put those desires in his creation to bring out the creation itself. Now, the tree of life is the spirit within man. Go back and look at it yourself in the Aramaic, especially in the Hebrew. The tree of life is the spirit within man in the midst of the tree of knowledge and good and evil. Man's spirit lays, it is the tree of life, and in its midst, is the knowledge of good and evil, a life, not a nat natural tree, a life. This life needed to understand good and evil, so it built principles and conditions needed to bring forth children, family communities, live together, and it is the tree of the knowledge of good and evil is structure, it is laws, it is justice, it is it is all those different things, rules and regulations and everything else. That tree of life, all those things laid in Adam. And as soon as the evil began to break, then all of those structures and laws and everything else had to start being put down. And they had to be able to live together. Just look at the simple Ten Commandments. And that tells you what the tree of the knowledge of good and evil is. The tree of the knowledge of good and evil is a life that says, thou shalt not steal. Rules, laws, thou shalt not kill. Thou shalt not covet your neighbor's things, his wife, or anything else. Thou shalt honor thy father and thy mother. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, soul, and mind. It's all structure. That's what the tree of the knowledge of good and evil was about. Evil didn't come about by some rogue something or another that that uh, that all of a sudden just broke loose and the Lord doesn't know what to do with it. It was a structured family issue in the pillar of fire and the pillar of fire began to bring it out in human beings. So we see this now. The tree of the knowledge of good and evil, the principles and conditions needed to bring forth. Children, family, communities, living together. And that's what it was about. Now, Genesis 2, 15 through 18. I want to read this to you now. And the Lord God took the man. Now we know what the tree of life is. It's your spirit. We know what the tree of knowledge is. It's principles, rules, convictions, family structure, all those different things. 
And the Lord God took the man and put him into the Garden of Eden to dress it and to keep it. So he took the man and he put the man, all of those desires in him, he put the man in the midst of it. He put the, the spirit and the tree of knowledge of good and evil into the midst of it. And the Lord God commanded the man saying, of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat. But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat of it. For in the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. And the Lord God said, it is not good that man should be alone. I will make him a help me for him. As soon, I mean, just as soon as the Lord God gave, gave humanity the knowledge that that they were a tree and that they could eat of all sorts of things in this tree, but there's one thing that you couldn't eat of. And as soon as he told him that, he began to build the desire in Adam. He began to build the desire in that little infant that was born. He began to build the desire in a woman and a man and whoever it might be when you come to this earth. As you begin to focus and you begin to understand there's things that you're learning, here comes the desire. He says, it's not good that men, man should be alone. The Lord put in Adam the want, the desire to move outside the present word. Here's, here's the way it reads when I go through the others. The spirit anointed the man to make the choices needed for not only children, but for children with understanding. That's what it breaks down to. Adam was a child. Adam was children. Every one of us are children. When you drop from your mother's womb, you're a child. You're a child of God. You're innocent. You're in that innocent stage, in that creation stage. And the Spirit anointed the man to make choices needed not only for children, but for children with understanding. And the only way, they already had the understanding of life. They had the understanding of what was good. They had the understanding of eternal life. They had the understanding of all these things and all these conditions and how great it was. They had all of that one side, but the Spirit anointed the man to take the choices needed for not only children, but children with understanding, children with family structures and values, children and the work within to begin the kingdom of Christ, his children in the earth. That's what he was doing. The spirit moved to help man understand the fruits in the family. Now, who was, what was the spirit doing? It was observing the object and learning. The family life and internal walk are mostly free. This is what he told him. Look, the spirit moved to help man understand the fruits in the family life. And, he, and the internal walk are mostly free. But there's one that is not free. There's one that holds a payment. There is a sacrifice with it, and that sacrifice is death. Now, when I begin to learn that, I, I, I'm a... I'm an elderly man now, but when I was my little grandson's age and I was just starting to focus just a little bit, someone said, you know, don't get in a car without your seatbelt. You'll die. Oh, I, I thought, what do you mean die? Don't, don't jump off of that diving board like that. Don't jump off of that cliff. Don't drive that car so fast. You'll die. I, I thought, what do you mean die? I, as a little kid, you know, um, don't swallow that. 
Don't put that ball in your mouth. Don't do that. It'll choke you to death. That's what children learn. Okay? And what happened was the Lord said, there's one thing in life that has a payment. There's one thing in life that has a sacrifice. And that payment and sacrifice, when you begin to eat of that that knowledge of good and evil, that payment and sacrifice is death. I don't know what death was, but he heard it. And I guarantee you, when he began to move in that direction and do the things that he did, he realized the consequences, the the, the feeling, the emotion, and the compassion of what death really is. So we see this, and that one attribute is the understanding of the whole person. This one attribute has a payment, but it will bring you the understanding of a whole person. That attribute brings the understanding of a whole person, good and evil. This comes as we mature and desire from an infant to a toddler to an adolescent and on into adulthood. Every situation brings added experience and understanding. And every situation brings a little more death. And it's for our learning when you eat off of that tree. When we decided to open the quality within ourselves from a little baby, when we decided to open that quality up within ourselves, we need to understand that nothing stays the same and it will affect us. Even today, it will affect you if you begin to open up that side of evil in your life. It'll affect you. It'll bring on diabolical things. It'll bring on things that, that you don't want in your life. So internal and external, it will start happening immediately. Death is the only way to understand good and evil. There's no other way to understand it. We are given the same understanding and movement of the spirit in our lives today. It's no wonder Paul made this statement. He was very clear about it. Paul said that I die daily. That's what this is about. The spirit released Adam's mind to begin thinking that he shouldn't be alone. It released his mind. It released your mind as you grew that you shouldn't be alone, that you should have friends. You should have family structure. You should have principles. You should have rules. You should have some regulation. You should have some things that help you to understand yourself, and then you should set parameters and understand who you are. All of those things, when we decided to open that quality, all those things begin to open in our lives. The spirit released Adam's mind. He released the baby's mind. He released the infant's mind to begin thinking that he shouldn't be alone. Family, children are in him. And Adam longed to multiply, just like the Spirit said, multiply and replenish the earth. The same desire of the pillar of fire, the Spirit <coughs> convinced the mind, the Spirit convinced the mind, and then moved him into a trance to accomplish what was needed for humanity to understand itself. He went into a deep sleep. Let me read here. And the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam, and he slept. We're talking about creation. We're talking about a design. And he slept, and he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh instead thereof. And the rib which the Lord God had taken from man made he a woman and brought her unto the man. And Adam said, This is now bone of my bone, flesh of my flesh, she shall be called woman because she was taken out of the man. 
Therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother and shall cleave unto his wife. Notice that. It's not the wife cleaving unto the man. It's the man leaving his father and mother and cleaving unto the wife. And they shall be one flesh. And they were both naked, the man and his wife, and were not ashamed. So we see this. Now, Genesis, I want to read to you what kind of came out when I was going through the Aramaic and the and and the Hebrew. And um, I don't know if you're listening or not, Augusto, but we know that Jesus Christ is Yeshua. We know all that. You should listen and learn something while you're on here. So now here's the Hebrew and the Aramaic. We as the theophany moving out of the pillar of fire into dense darkness. We as the theophany moved out of the pillar of fire into dense darkness, fell into a trance. That's what dense darkness. And a rib was removed or we woke to a dual nature, dual reality for a season of learning. A rib. It actually is a symbolic of a part of the heart. The singleness, the transforming of the heart of Adam from a single to a dual nature. That's what went on. That's what happens to you as you grow a little older. As you grow older, you begin to pick up and you begin to understand that, hey, I'm kind of a dual nature here. And, and symbolically, it is the heart. And you begin to build your understanding in the tree of life by the tree of death. Now, Genesis 2 and 23 to 25, and man accepted the dual nature. This is what it comes out to. And man accepted the dual nature and the physical difference, knowing that it was already a design and a pattern within the animals and within his heart. She came before him. He accepted the mind declared that humanity must accept the dual nature and the man and woman leave the concept of father and mother in relation to the pillar of fire and begin to move within themselves to learn. Of course, father is the pillar of fire. Mother is the earth and man began to move to develop himself and the woman, just like you did in you, you begin to move to develop yourself and you did it in a dual nature. One of them uh, under disobedience, under rules and regulations, under rebel, under all kinds of things. And the other one under the word, under Christ, having an understanding and you begin to merge the two together to bring them to one. So the new nature and the laws and principles of male and female must be adhered to. And man leaves the father, mother, theophonic word to cling to his wife and be one. And it is the world order. It's what's going on now. Keeping our thought on the design of creation we see in this part five and unpacking. That's what's going on from the thought into the theophany and into the elements. It is a unpacking or a bringing things out of the attributes and qualities of the pillar of fire. It's very clear that all beginnings start in this manner. This is why Moses wrote these first two chapters. It wasn't anything odd. It is the exact pattern and understanding of creation. Everything starts compacted together. Everything starts compacted together. It's a very clear thing that all beginnings start in this manner. Now, density is packed together in such a way. The word compact means density. 
hiding the qualities of the universe. The universe was in darkness, dense. And when a baby is first born, that's exactly what it is. It's in the womb, it's growing, it's in darkness, it's in density, it's compacted. Everything happens. Everything starts compacted together in such a density, hiding the qualities of a universe, of a person, of a field of creation, botany, animal, human, ocean, every other creation. And I did say every creation, even the age of the church. Just look at the age of the church, the past 2,000 years, and you'll get an idea of what I'm saying. The age of the church was compacted into the womb. You know what the prophet said? He told us that the church had been in the womb for the last 2,000 years, compacted, dense, density in darkness. Even the age um, of the church building through nine stages, alpha, seven, omega, nine stages it was burning in or, or developing in. And, and it was those nine stages. That's why a woman has nine months to drop one from the womb. So we see this now. Every creation is compacted together and building through the stages. This church ages, seven ages compacted together so tight that the density was limiting the spirit of creation. Nobody even knew that anything was going on. Nobody knew there was a body building. It was so dense, so dark, and it was compacted so close together. Ephesians 4 and 16. For whom the whole body fitly joined together and compacted by that which, it, which every joint supplies, according to the effectual working and the measure of every part, makes increase of the body under the edifying of itself in love. So the body moves through a time of density, moves through a time of darkness, and it is compacted, dense, density, darkness, shadow, lightless. Look at the church ages in the womb, could not speak for itself, the prophet said, and the seed is not air with a shuck laying in the womb, waned in the church ages. He said it waned out into total darkness, had no light of its own. The moon had no light of its own, compacted dark density until no one even knew there was a body of the church and it started having contractions. It came through nine months, zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and on the eighth day, nine stages, and now it's time to, just exactly the way he unpacked from the thought to the theophany into materialization, now is the time for this unpacking. Now is this, the stages are finished, and now is the unsealing, the unpacking. The density of darkness in the womb is relinquished. We are not there anymore. We are standing up. We're speaking for ourselves. We understand who we are. We have stepped into the innocent age once again with a caveat that they didn't have before the church ages. And that is that we are righteous. We have righteousness added to our resume. We have righteousness added to us. So even though we stand in an innocent condition, clean after those ages and dropping out of the womb and standing up for herself. At the same time, we have understanding of a total redemption plan and what has happened to us. The Urim Thummim has a new stone added to it. The spirit of humanity has an 11 cents added to its portfolio. That's who we are. The stone is love and the 11 cents is faith. See, taste, feel, smell here. Memory, conscience, reason, affection, imagination. And 11 is faith. So we see these things. Now, I want to run something so you understand 
where we're at in this day. This is the this is the eighth day. We come out of the womb. We're standing. Now the whole world is in a turmoil. It's in total chaos. You know why? The matrix broke. The placenta went everywhere. It's 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 a it's a chaotic situation. But in the middle of that chaotic situation is a baby is a innocent people who come through childhood, come through tutors and governors and everything else. And we are like Adam was back there. We were born on our feet. We are standing on our feet in an innocent age, understanding who we are. Brother Branham said when Jesus, he couldn't speak for himself when he was in the womb. But when he got out of the womb, he spoke for himself. He said, I am my father of one, except you believe that I am he. He spoke for himself, and we are now out of the womb, standing up, full-grown, matured, and righteous in an innocent age where we are rebuilding and creating a new world, and the whole world around us is in total chaos, and that is fine. That is okay. We know it has to happen. They will come to a settled condition. We watched it. I mean, we come to a victory of love divine just in the last month. We come to a victory. I prayed and I prayed for four years, every morning and every evening. Lord, please move. The world needs what we call America for now. The world needs that. They need that leadership. They need this nation to return to Jesus Christ. And he put everything in the right position to do it. And you see all the other world leaders falling in line, left and right. You see them doing the things that they're doing because they know that strength brings peace. And I'm not talking about Donald Trump. I'm talking about Jesus Christ. Someone wrote me and said, oh, you think Donald Trump, uh, you, 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 uh, he's brought the worst division since the Civil War. And I thought, you must not have watched and seen what happened. The entire nation voted for this to happen, to move away from that woke situation, to move away from all of that pedophilia and I could just keep going down the human trafficking, the child abuse, the mutilation, the destruction of our youth and education, the, the drag queens, the everything else in our schools and everywhere. We moved away from that all in one fail swoop. And now the spirit will move us on. We have had a great victory. And the great victory wasn't in the Republican Party. And the great victory wasn't in the Democrat Party. And the great victory wasn't in Donald Trump. The great victory was in you. The things that I prayed for, the things that you prayed for, the things that we wanted to see in humanity, the step we made to say, we want humanity to move and we want Christ in our lives, in the world, in every arena. We're watching it happen. This is a great day. The pillar of fire has moved in the elements in a great way. I love this with all of my heart. It means everything to me. And we can see what's going on. That is part five. I think maybe I have one more part to kind of bring out. And, uh, and then there are other things we'll move on to. But this is in my heart. I wanted you to see this. There's a pattern and a design of creation, and it is real. And it is in you from, your, from the time you dropped from your mother's womb. It has developed itself in you. Every creation has a pattern and a design moving from the pillar of fire. It is the creator of all things. Nothing was created by him and for him. Or I'm sorry, 
nothing was created except by him and for him. And without him, there was nothing made. The first thing out of the thought was a little pillar of fire dancing on his father's porch. And look at what it's done today. Love bless you. I love you with all my heart. I hope that this has been somewhat of a help for you. And uh, Lord Jesus, we come to you. We thank you for these five so far. We ask that you would continue to open these secrets to us and let us see what real creation is and how that it is a spark of the pillar of fire that keeps moving. We thank you. We pray for those that need the help physically, health, financial, whatever it might be. We pray in the name of Jesus Christ. We pray that you would touch those people and help them. Amen. Love bless you. And we will see you the next time around.